everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hashtag MD. I'm your host for today, Didi. So, talagang dapat kasama ko si Chris ngayon, but apparently she's outside. You know naman how she is. She really is determined to cover this topic. And you know what this topic is all about. Yes, correct. It's gastrointestinal pharmacology. Now, you should be able to cover what is it about, um, what disease may be involved, and also what drugs are considered for treatment. So, these are only some of the questions that we should uh, be covering. So, you want to find out where she is right now? So, Crazy, where are you? Hi, Hi, everyone. I'm your favorite host, Crazy. So, as you can see, we are in the studio ngayon because our producers, directors, and scriptwriters want to do something else. So, hindi pa ta, nandito tayo ngayon sa Tony's Bar and Resto. Ituro mo, ililuto ko. So, Daiti, kamusta ka naman dyan sa studio? Yes, definitely. Sobrang okay dito sa studio. Kaya alam, medyo lonely because you're outside, you know? So, back to the topic na, since this is all about gastrointestinal pharmacology, um, how do you think should we introduce this to our viewers? Kiyan na tayo nandito sa labas. Maghahanap tayo ng tao na pwedeng may interview. What? You didn't tell me about this! So, kaya ka naman pala nagpapasal si Chit sa akin last night, ha? Kaya naman pala. So, now you will be conducting a personal one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, not entirely one-on-one, -on -one, no? Basta interview outside with um, people you might know who have peptic ulcer or acid peptic disease or some sort, right? Am I right? Now, that sounds really fun. So, good luck there. So, tara na! Tingi! Masaya to! So finally, natahanap na rin tayo ng prospect natin. Kasama natin ngayon si Razel na nag lbm daw. So, ilang araw ka nang nag lbm Razel? I don't know. It just happened. I ate yesterday. I ate the other day, I ate the day before that. Ah, then my stomach feels funny. I always go to the bathroom and it really hurts. Now I'm sweating. I don't know what to do. It really hurts. Ah, now it feels funny again. It sounds so weird. Ah. So I guess right and you really love, love, love to eat. And you look so pale the world. And mukhang uso talaga ang LBM ngayon. Even me, Bimbi and Josh, they're also experiencing LBM right now. Oh, um, magaling kayo, babies! So, do you know what's really happening in your stomach right now? Not really. To explain this to us, let's call Dr. Chanelo, a gastroenterologist of Perpetual Health Result Medical Center, to explain to us your condition, Razen. Hello, Good day, Chrissy. I'm watching your show right now and I believe that Razan is experiencing loose bowel movement or diarrhea. Acute diarrhea is mostly caused by infectious agents accompanied with vomiting fever and abdominal pain. Other causes may include medications, toxins, and ischemia. But in Razan's case, it may be due to one of the foods that she ate that may be infected with bacteria such as Salmonella, Campylobacter, Shigella, E. coli, Bacillus cereus, or Listeria. Oh yes, I remember now. I'm a medical student from Janelta. I almost forgot. Oh wow, a student from my favorite school, the JFSMR North Star. Oh my gosh. So, you know what's our topic for today? Yeah, it's all about gastrointestinal pharmacology. Oh, gee, I'm so excited. Oh, no, ouch, no. <laughs> anyway, hi to my friends and family. I'm, I'm a TV, right? Hello. <laughs> hi to my super friends in Janelpa. Help me. 
Your right, Razen. Gastrointestinal pharmacology ang topic natin ngayon. So, Razen, what do you know about it? Um, acid peptic diseases, which are disorders involving gastric acid and pepsin. But these are not exactly the pathogenic factors. When the protective barriers of our stomach to the reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus, or the stomach's mucosal defenses fail, then dyspepsia, erosive esophagitis, or even ulcer may occur. Treatment and prevention of these disorders are accomplished by decreasing gastric acidity and enhancing mucosal defense. Yes, yes, and you're correct. And students from JFSM are so bright. I bet your professors in pharmacology are so galing. Right, Razen? So as you mentioned, we have different approaches in treatment for gastrointestinal pharmacology. We have acid peptic disease, drugs for, ac for acid peptic disease, gastroparesis, antiemetic, laxatives, and lastly, lastly anti-diarrheal drugs. So let's watch this video. Drugs used in acid peptic disease. When caused by Helicobacter pylori, it is best eradicated together with the use of antibiotics such as amoxicillin, clarithromycin, metronidazole, and tetracycline. The first among these drugs are histamine H2 receptor blockers, which are effective in controlling symptoms of uncomplicated peptic ulcer. An example is cimetidine, which acts by inhibiting cytochrome P450 enzyme, but also in the process inhibits the metabolism of other drugs in the body. Other H2 blockers do not inhibit the cytochrome P450 enzyme. Other drugs include ranitidine, famotidine, and nizatidine. Proton pump inhibitors. They are effective in reducing acid secretion and acts by inhibiting the hydrogen-potassium ATPase enzyme in gastric parietal cells. Drugs include meprazole, lansoprazole, rabaprazole, and pantoprazole. Mucosal protective agents. These include misoprostol, which is a prostaglandin E1 analogue on sucrophate. Misoprostol, after oral administration, is rapidly esterified to form misoprostolic acid, that inhibits acid production within 30 minutes. Sucrophate, on the other hand, acts by polymerizing via extensive cross-linking and adhering to epithelial cells and also craters. The last among these drugs are antacids. They are weak bases that can neutralize gastric acidity, but are the least effective. It includes aluminum hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, or a combination of the two. Gastroparesis is described as a loss of esophageal and gastric emptying motility, and can cause severe bloating, pain, and vomiting. Treatment includes metoclopramide and cisapride, which stimulates gastric motility. Metoclopramide is a dopamine antagonist and releaser of acetylcholine. Cisapride, on the other hand, is a serotonin antagonist that can cause prolongation of QT interval. Antiemetic drugs are important for control of nausea and vomiting due to cancer chemotherapy and surgical anesthesia. These include ondansetron, doxamethasone, diphenhydramine, metoclopramide, blocroperazine, and dronabinol. Laxatives act by several mechanisms such as bowel irritation, bog formation, stool softening, and lubrication. Lastly, antidiarrheal drugs are opioid derivatives acting on opioid receptors in the stomach and includes loperamide, diphenoxalate, and diphenoxin, which is an active metabolite of diphenoxalate. Oh, I should be taking the antidiarrheal drugs. Now I know. Good thing I have loperamide. Wow, Razen, you also prepared. Ako din meron, no? Ito, oh. Okay. Thank you, Razen. Back to you, Daiti. That's very informative, huh? I think I've learned a lot today. And I, as I know our viewers have learned a lot today as well, too. So thank you to Razen. And be thankful also that you, Crazy, have a very smart student today as your patient. So, Crazy, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this wraps up our today's episode, Gastrointestinal Pharmacology. So, I think we, uh, we would like to thank our sponsors. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. you for watching!